Just one minute. Is the material visible? No. Well, is the material visible? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. So next, uh, I mean, technique of discretization of analog filters. This is known as bilinear transformation. Right. Just recall the exact relation between Z and S. Z is equal to e to the power S tau. Therefore, S is equal to 1 by tau natural logarithm of Z. There is a version mismatch. So that's why here a box has come in. This should actually be approximately equal to 1 by tau natural logarithm of Z approximately equal to 2 by tau 1 minus z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus z to the power minus 1. If you expand natural logarithm of z into an infinite series and truncate the series after the first term, then you will get this approximate relation between s and z. So this is known as, this relation is known as bilinear transformation or Tustin transformation relation. Therefore, based on this approximate relation between S and Z, what we can do is that, how does it help us in obtaining an equivalent digital filter for any continuous time filter? Simply in the expression for GS of the analog filter, replace S with 2 by tau 1 minus Z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus Z to the power minus 1. So you will get the transfer function of an equivalent digital filter. Now, this bilinear transformation relation, we have also seen that it can also be obtained by comparing the transfer functions of an ideal, that means a continuous time integrator and a discrete time trapezoidal integrator. What is the Transfer function of a continuous time integrator, it's 1 by S. All right. And what is the transfer function of a discrete time trapezoidal integrator in the Z domain? It's tau by 2, 1 plus Z to the power minus 1 by 1 minus Z to the power minus 1. That means 1 by S can be considered to be approximately equal to tau by 2 times this term. Or S is approximately equal to what is written here 2 into 1 minus z to the power minus 1 divided by tau into 1 plus z to the power minus 1 so the same relation can also be obtained in this way all right that's why this method of discretization of analog filter this is also known as trapezoidal integration method write down this part Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, someone is not able to enter the class. Can you please say it? I've allowed of several of them just now. Okay, that's sure. Thank you, sir.
but whenever i do that it's very difficult to go back to this uh, word document i cannot see the word document right now so again some So write down this one part. Hey, I cannot go on allowing in this way. You cannot enter the class whatever, whenever you like. One by tau natural logarithm of z that should be equal to approximately equal to this box. There was some version mismatch of the equation editor, so this is actually approximately equal to. Bilinear transformation method is an extremely important method for discretization of analog filters. Comparison of the two trans transfer functions also yields this bilinear transformation relation. That's why the method is also known as trapezoidal integration method. Have a look at equation three now. From equation one, we obtained that Z is approximately equal to what was equation one? That is equation one. From this equation, if you rearrange the terms, you will get an expression for Z. 
z again here this is approximately equal to 2 by tau plus s divided by 2 by tau minus s or it's equal to 1 plus tau by 2 into s divided by 1 minus tau by 2 into s here just substitute sigma plus j omega for s replace s with sigma plus j omega in equation 3 then what would you get on making that substitution Z will become equal to 1 plus sigma tau by 2 plus j omega tau by 2 divided by 1 minus sigma tau by 2 minus j omega tau by 2. If that is the case, then what will be the expression for magnitude of Z? Just root over. In the numerator, you have root over 1 plus sigma tau by 2 whole square plus omega square tau square by 4. In denominator, you have root over of this term. So only difference between the numerator and denominator is here you have a positive sign, here you have a negative sign. That is the only difference. All right. Then how will the different regions in the S plane map onto the Z plane in accordance with this approximate relation between Z and S? Uh, sigma and j omega. Hmm? What will be the relation? Just see that while I am trying to um, let you enter into this meeting, I am not able to go back to the Word document. Is it visible? So what can you say? If you consider three cases, sigma less than zero, sigma equal to zero, and sigma greater than zero, what will happen to the magnitude of Z? If you have a look at this term, 1 plus minus sigma tau by 2 whole squared. This is 1 plus sigma squared tau squared by 4 plus minus sigma tau. Therefore, now if you consider three cases, when sigma is less than 0, what is written on the left-hand side will be less than what is written on the right-hand side. The left-hand side appears in the numerator. The right-hand side appears in the denominator. So if that is the case for sigma less than zero, correspondingly, what will happen? The magnitude of Z, it will be less than one. All right. If you substitute sigma equal to zero here in this expression, substitute sigma equal to zero, magnitude of Z will come out as one. If you substitute sigma greater than zero, what will happen? 
what is written on the right hand side that means this one will be greater than left hand side that means in this expression magnitude of z it will be greater than 1 so i repeat that sigma less than 0 means magnitude of z less than 1 sigma equal to 0 means magnitude of z equal to 1 and sigma greater than 0 means magnitude of z greater than 1 all right it means that the j omega axis in the s plane maps onto the circumference of the unit circle centered at origin in the z plane now sigma less than 0 means magnitude of z less than 1 implication is that if gs has a pole in the left half of s plane the image of this pole in the z plane will be inside the unit circle therefore causal stable continuous time filters will result in causal and stable discrete time filters if you carry out discretization by this bilinear transformation technique We made the same observations in case of the exact relation between S and Z. Now we are considering uh, an approximate relation between S and Z. So apparently the observations appear to be same. But is it really so or there is any subtle difference? Let us try to examine. First write down this part. Since we are deviating from the exact relation between S and Z and opting for an approximate relation, everything cannot be same.
I should have written here, therefore, if sigma is less than zero, then this equation holds good. And under that condition, magnitude of z is less than one. So some if will should come here, if sigma is less than zero. And here, if sigma is equal to zero, magnitude of z is one. If you just concentrate on the mapping of the j omega axis, when we considered the exact relation between S and Z, what happened? Whenever you cover a span of omega S along the j omega axis, the unit circle centered at origin in the Z plane, it was traversed once. There was one complete traversal of the circumference of the unit circle centered at origin in the Z plane. So when you sweep along the J omega axis from omega equal to minus infinity to omega equal to plus infinity, the circumference of the unit circle that was traversed infinite number of times. Therefore, every point on the circumference of this unit circle that is the image of infinite number of points on the j omega axis in the s plane. As a matter of fact, every point in the z plane is the image of infinite number of points in the s plane. So that is the reason why aliasing of characteristic took place when we considered the impulse invariant transformation, which is nothing but the application of standard Z transform. To understand the intricacies of this transformation method, we describe a phenomenon that takes place here that is known as frequency warping, frequency warping or distortion. When we design any filter, what property of the filter gives you idea about the behavior of the filter? Obviously, the frequency response. So here, 
let us try to compare between the frequency responses of the analog filter under consideration which has been discretized and the frequency response of the equivalent digital filter. So the analog filter frequency response is G, J omega, while the discrete time filter frequency response that is G, D, E to the power J omega prime T. So small omega G with argument J small omega. So this small omega is the frequency in the analog domain and capital omega prime is the frequency in the digital domain, both in radians per second. So let us try to derive a relation between small omega and capital omega prime. You may wonder that why am I uh, representing the two frequencies by different symbols? Well, if there is no logic in such representation, the, I mean, small omega and capital omega prime, they should come out to be same. Then we may understand that, well, there is no logic. Otherwise, if the expression is different, if they are not equal, there is every reason to represent them by two different symbols, and that will indicate that there is a distortion in the frequency response. So that is the rationale. In the sir, expression, at a signal ke jodi discretize kodi tarle tar frequency response ta sir periodic ashe. So, sir, frequency response spectrum ta, ta, spectrum ta. Spectrum ta. frequency response hai na. frequency response system hai hai. Ha, yes, spectrum sir. Ta, bolo. Ha, to, sir, oitar periodicity to, sir, tau s hobe na two pi hobe. Mane, uh, I jodi uh, omega s frequency te. Jodi tumi uh, radians per second ne consider kado frequency ta hale periodicity ta hobe omega s. Othoba f s jodi hertz ne consider kado. R judi dimensionless quantity is a way considered kodo radiance to express kora hoi on exomai on discrete yes, time signal ekate radiance expression kora express kora hoi. Tahole omega s maneki omega s mane hoche 2 pi 2 pi into x so 2 pi period is it a 2 pi hobe shake it. So omega s equal to 2 pi into fs tahole should the 2 pi ta consensus bolche. Jodi dimensionless quantity is a way express kodo tahole frequency to hoye dhanabe omega s into tau. Eta frequency hoye dhanabe angular frequency capital omega s the jodi ke represent kodo. Tahole omega s into tau ta ki hoche. Into tomar kotha unu yehi omega s into tau ta thale 2 pi dhanat chhe na. Omega s mani ki 2 pi by tau. 2 pi by tau haan. Omega s into tau mani 2 pi. Two pi hoche. express frequency. Radians of radians per sample, like a Tau ke omega s and mod the absorb kurino hoche. Now in the expression relating s and z. You replace S with J small omega and Z with E to the power J capital omega prime tau. This was the relation. On making those substitutions, what you get is written here in equation 6. J omega is 2 by tau 1 minus E to the power minus J omega prime tau J into capital omega prime tau divided by 1 plus e to the power minus j into here there is a mistake here it should be capital omega prime actually in my lecture i represent frequency in radians by capital omega 
So that's why I have used a different symbol here, capital Omega prime, to represent frequency in radians per second. So here it should be capital Omega prime. So here also prime, there also prime, obviously same. There, therefore, in the numerator and denominator, if you just multiply the numerator by e to the power j into half into omega prime into tau and denominator by the same expression, then you get this expression. Here also omega prime. All right. Now in the numerator, if you divide the numerator by twice j and multiply by twice j, what will you get? What will happen to the numerator? It will become twice j into sine capital omega prime tau by 2. All right. Dividing the numerator by twice j and multiplying by twice j. That is what is written here. In the denominator, if you multiply the denominator by 2 and divide it by 2, it will become 2 cosine omega prime tau by 2. All right. So these two and these two in the numerator and denominator, they will cancel out. So j into small omega will become j into 2 by tau into 10 omega prime tau by 2. So that is, this relation is known as frequency warping relation. This is one of the frequency warping relation. You can also write in this way, omega is this one. You can also write that capital omega prime the digital frequency in radians per second, it will be 2 by tau, tan inverse, small omega, tau by 2. All right. So these two relations are known as frequency warping relations. And they indicate a gross distortion between small omega and capital omega prime. All right. Write down this part. তোমাদের প্রফেসর পাল যে ক্লাস নোটগুলো পাঠিয়েছেন সেখানে দেখবে যে যখন when the z transform of a sinusoidal signal uh, sinusoidal discrete time signal causal sinusoid that was evaluated then first you consider the sequence as sin omega tau omega n tau all right then you absorbed tau into omega. So that became capital, the sign of capital omega into n. There was no independent time parameter, time variable present there. So if you represent the sequence as sign of capital omega into n, what is the unit of capital omega? That is radiance or radiance per sample. So that is the reason. Hey, I am small omega s is two pi. We sinusoidal signal capital uh, small omega shange cap tau ke action ke club kore capital omega power gallo. Capital omega unit hotche tomar radians. The spectrum, the spectrum that you get of the discrete time signal, it will be periodic in small omega s or fs. Or if you want to express the frequency unit in radians, the periodicity will be twice pi radians. Small omega s radians per second or twice pi radians or fs hertz this will be the period of the sig of the spectrum
So be careful here in equation six. I have made some there is a slip. You should write capital omega prime here and here. What will happen at very low frequencies? Tan capital omega prime tau by 2, it will become approximately capital omega prime tau by 2 if that this because the unit of capital omega prime tau that is in radian. So tan capital omega prime tau by 2 will become approximately omega prime tau by 2 at low frequencies. Therefore, small omega and capital omega prime, they will become approximate, approximately equal at low frequencies. So except for very low frequencies, a gross distortion between small omega and capital omega prime takes place. As a result, the frequency response of the analog filter gets considerably distorted. When you change over from the analog filter to the equivalent digital filter, except for very low frequencies.
So this is actually the plot between small omega and capital omega prime tau. As capital omega prime tau tends to pi, small omega tends to plus in infinity. As capital omega prime tau tends to minus pi, small omega tends to minus infinity. So you can see here that no two values of small omega can have the same value of capital omega prime tau. That means if you just consider every value of capital omega prime over this range, minus pi by tau to plus pi by tau, then every value of capital omega prime, it is the image of a single value of small omega. Single value of small omega. Therefore, here the aliasing of characteristic does not take place. All right. Aliasing of characteristic does not take place in this transformation technique. So what will happen when small omega is minus infinity, what will be capital omega prime? It will be minus pi by tau or capital omega prime tau that will be minus pi. Similarly, as small omega becomes tends to plus infinity, capital omega prime tau, it will be pi. So now just try to see here that when you start traveling along the j omega axis from omega equal to minus infinity, here in the z plane you were there because omega prime tau, that should be minus one uh, minus pi. So minus pi means angle is measured in this way. That is the zero, zero position, zero degree. So from zero degree minus pi. So you were here. So as you travel upward along the J omega axis, you will be traveling in this direction. In this way, when you reach J, omega equal to zero, you will be here. If you continue your march, and move on to the higher and higher values of positive values of omega, you'll be continuing your journey along the circumference of the unit circle. And ultimately, as omega tends to infinity, you will come back here. So one complete traversal only. As you sweep along the j omega axis from omega equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So aliasing of characteristic does not take place here. That is an advantage of this method, but the baseband frequency response, the original frequency response, it becomes grossly distorted, not because of characteristic aliasing, that is absent, but because of a nonlinear relation between small omega and capital omega prime. Draw this figure.
এখানে একটা কি যেন ওভারল্যাপ হয়ে গেছে দাঁড়াও এক মিনিট now every point on the circumference of the unit circle centered at origin in the z plane it is the image of a single point on the j omega axis that is the reason why characteristic aliasing is absent in this transformation technique The simple example in the next part, I have tried to illustrate the effect of frequency warping.
<clears throat> just see here that I have drawn a typical arbitrarily chosen amplitude uh, response of a continuous time filter. This is the small omega axis and that is the magnitude of gj omega axis. So this is an arbitrarily chosen amplitude response of a continuous time filter that is being discretized by bilinear transformation. So in the next figure I have drawn here the y axis is small omega and x axis is capital omega prime tau. So as you can see that in the for low frequencies it's almost it's linear almost linear and distortion becomes more and more severe as capital omega prime tau approaches pi units and small omega tends to infinity plus infinity as capital omega prime tau tends to pi so if you just have a projection of the salient values of omega here and here. I mean, take the projection and come back here. So what will you get? A frequency response of this form. So that is a compressed version of the frequency response of the continuous time filter. So this is the frequency response of the digital filter that you obtain by bilinear transformation. So see how distorted is that one. So draw this figure. Have you done it? To overcome the effect of frequency warping, we introduce what is known as frequency pre-warping before application of bilinear transformation technique. So what is the procedure involved? Let us see.
just recall that when you apply bilinear transformation you change over from small omega to capital omega prime so what happens distortion takes place according to equation 7 or you may say distortion takes place according to equation 8 truly speaking so from small omega you get capital omega prime so distortion as you move from analog filter to digital filter by bilinear transformation distortion takes place in accordance with this relation 8 Therefore, prior to application of bilinear transformation, if we can apply a distortion to the critical frequencies in accordance with equation 7, then what will happen? We do intentional warping of the cutoff frequency, the stop bandage, etc. according to equation 7 and then the transfer function of the analog filter that we obtain with these new frequencies that is subjected to bilinear transformation. So in the course of applying bilinear transformation, distortion will take place in accordance with 8, just the reverse distortion. So the pre-distortion, pre-introduced distortion and the distortion that will take place due to bilinear transformation they nullify each other all right at frequencies close to the critical frequencies so that is the idea involved so come to bilinear transformation and frequency pre-warping To write down these parts which uh, I have already pointed out. First, desired critical set of digital filter fre corner frequencies, capital omega 1 prime, capital omega 2 prime, etc. They are determined from the specifications given. So you apply the frequency warping relation to get small omega 1 small omega 2 capital omega 1 prime is converted to small omega 1 capital omega 2 prime is converted to small omega 2 so with this new set of critical frequencies you obtain the order of the filter if not already stated you obtain the order of the filter and consequently you obtain the analog filter transfer function. Then you apply the bilinear transformation.
I have here enumerated the steps. The steps to be followed, they have been enumerated one by one here. So what will be the first step? the desired critical frequencies capital omega c1 prime capital omega c2 prime etc of digital filter to obtain analog cutoff frequencies small omega c1 small omega c2 small omega c3 in accordance with the relation that is written here so this is the pre warping state step So that is the first step that I have pointed out. All right. In the second step, you obtain the transfer function GS of a suitable analog filter with this cutoff frequencies, new set of cutoff frequencies. Then you transform GS to GDZ by applying bilinear transformation. So these are the three steps involved. Write down. The specifications that will be provided to you are the intended specifications for the digital filter that you will ultimately obtain. Remember that, not of the analog filter. So these are the specifications meant for the ultimate digital filter. In impulse invariant transformation, you consider those critical frequencies as analog filter critical frequencies because you have no other way. You have to do that. Similar is the case for that uh, approximation of derivative technique. But here, from the desired digital filter cutoff frequency, you get the warped analog filter cutoff frequencies. Then using those cutoff frequencies, you obtain the order of the filter and then the analog filter transfer function. You have written this part.
now i have considered here a very simple example Have a look at this example. You have been asked to design a first order digital low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of small a radians per second, obviously, and DC gain of one. Remember that in, in any filter design problem, if the DC gain is not specified, you have to consider it as zero dB or one. For a high pass filter, if nothing is mentioned about the high frequency gain, you have to consider it as 1 or 0 dB. Anyway, so here the DC gain is given as 1. So here the desired cutoff frequency of the digital filter is A radians per second. So what will be the watt cutoff frequency of equivalent analog filter? It's small A1 equal to 2 by tau tan a tau by 2. So transfer function of first order analog low pass Butterworth filter with this cutoff frequency a1 and a DC gain of 1. What will be that transfer function? 1 by 1 plus s by a1. That means a1 divided by s plus a1. In place of a1, I have written here 2 by tau, 10 a tau by 2 here and there. All right. Now you have to apply the bilinear transformation. Application of bilinear transformation means in this expression for GS, you have to replace S with 2 by tau, 1 minus Z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus Z to the power minus 1. So this is the application of bilinear transformation. Just see here that in the numerator and denominator, this 2 by tau, this term is common. This is an interesting thing. In the numerator, that 2 by tau term, and in the denominator, in the second term, which contains 2 by tau, this 2 by tau and that 2 by tau, they have crept in while we pre warped the desired digital filter cutoff frequencies. That was the result of appearance of those two tau terms was the result of this bilinear, uh, this frequency pre-warping. In this term, the two by tau term has come in. Why? Why has it come in? It is because of the bilinear transformation relation that has been substituted here. So all these two tau terms, they will cancel out. So GDZ will come out as 10 a tau by 2 divided by 1 minus Z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus Z to the power minus 1 plus 10 a tau by 2. It can be simplified further. You have to simplify it further and obtain the transfer function. But I have not done that because it's simply an algebraic process. But what I wanted to point out here is that this 2 by tau in the numerator and denominator, they have cancelled out. This is not a mere coincidence. The 2 by tau arising from the application of frequency pre warping and from the application of bilinear transformation, they cancel out. This is a general phenomenon. All right, irrespective of the type of filter that you design, this thing will take place. Therefore, for practical purposes, for practical purposes, not an exact relation, it is sufficient to consider when you are applying bilinear transformation preceded by frequency pre-warping, it is sufficient to consider small omega as 10 capital omega prime tau by 2 and S as equal to 1 minus Z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus Z to the power minus 1. Because 2 by tau that is supposed to be present here and 2 by tau that is supposed to be present there, 
both these two by terms they will cancel out. Now, as a consequence, just try to understand this thing. Often the digital filter, desired digital filter cutoff frequencies, they will not be specified in radians per second. They will be specified in radians. Specified in radians means you will not be provided with the value of omega prime, omega 1 prime, omega 2 prime, etc. But they will be, you will be provided with the value of omega 1, omega, capital omega 1, capital omega 2, etc. Capital omega 1 means the product of capital omega 1 prime into tau. Capital omega 2 means the product of capital omega 2 prime into tau. So instead of giving the digital filter critical frequencies in radians per second, they can be given in radians. So if that be the case, because we have seen that it's not necessary to use 2 by tau in these relations, therefore, for frequency pre-warping, relation that should be used is 10 times capital omega prime, which includes tau inside it. All right. And here also 2 by tau is not required. Here also 2 by tau is not required. That means in that type of problem, it is not necessary to have a knowledge of the sampling frequency or sampling. Rate. Be careful about that. If you are given such a problem, you will raise a hullabaloo that if you have not prior knowledge, you may wonder that why this sampling frequency information is not provided. Right, write down this part.
now have a look at another issue what we have described just now it was that the specifications were given the desired digital cutoff frequencies were made known to you then you did the frequency pre-warping etc and then applied the bilinear transformation instead the problem may come up in this way also that a particular analog filter transfer function gs may be available to you and you may, you may be required to obtain the equal uh, equivalent digital filter transfer function by bilinear transformation if you straightway apply the bilinear transformation on this uh, gs what will happen the effect of frequency warping will be there therefore you have to apply frequency pre-warping but how to do that remember that the transfer function gs if you want to obtain the equivalent digital filter what will be the equivalent digital filter critical frequencies the equivalent digital filter critical frequencies will be same are expected to be same as the analog filter critical frequencies how are the analog filter critical frequencies obtained from the location of the poles and zeros recall your knowledge of body plot they are the breakpoints. They determine the breakpoints. So those analog filter poles and zeros, they are to be pre-warped first. Because ultimately, you desire a digital filter with this analog filter critical frequencies as their own frequencies, own critical frequencies. So instead of directly applying the bilinear transformation first, you have to uh, pre-warp the analog filter critical frequencies. So every real pole and zero represented by S plus A. All right. That has to be converted into S plus A prime, where A prime is 2 by tau, 10 A tau by 2. That is the first step. I am talking about if straightway the expression for GS is given to you. For complex poles and zeros, you have to convert the second order terms of this form into the form specified here, where omega n prime is 2 by tau 10 omega n tau by 2. So from GS, you obtain a modified transfer function gs prime gsa prime all right now you apply bilinear transformation gdz it will be gsa prime with s replaced by that expression but remember here that in this case when you are moving from gs given gs via bilinear pre-warping i uh, via frequency pre-warping then application of bilinear transformation, your amplitude scaling is not automatic. Preserving the DC gain is not automatic. If the uh, filter under consideration is a low pass filter, preserving the high frequency gain is not automatic. If the filter under consideration is a high pass filter. So you have to introduce a scaling constant K to preserve either the DC gain or the high frequency gain as the case may be. That's what I've written down in this step three. Amplitude scaling is not automatically satisfied and must be considered separately. If DC gain has to be preserved, we evaluate the filters constant. By now, I don't know whether you uh, have um, knowledge. How would you obtain the DC gain of a digital filter? A discrete time LTI system from the given GDZ, how will you obtain the DC gain? Simply by replacing Z with 1. In the expression for GDZ, if you substitute Z with 1, you get the DC gain. Why it is so? In the expression for any GS, 
you have to substitute s with 0 to get the dc gain and because z is e to the power s tau therefore obtaining the dc gain of gdz is simply substituting z equal to 1 in case of high frequency gain you have to substitute z equal to minus 1 because for obtaining the high frequency gain in, in case of analog filters, you have to substitute omega equal to infinity. But okay. in case of discrete time filters, the maximum discrete time signals, the maximum frequency of interest is omega is by 2. So what is the corresponding z? e to the power s tau that means e to the power j omega s by 2 into tau that means e to the power j pi e to the power j pi means minus 1 therefore for any transfer function gdz the high frequency gain is obtained by replacing z with minus 1 so in this way you may match the dc gain of the analog filter and the digital filter or the high frequency gain of the analog filter and the digital filter as the case may be so write down this part Which is
have a look at this example again a very simple example Just see that you have been given an analog filter transfer function G is equal to A by S plus A. And you have to determine the equivalent digital filter transfer function by applying bilinear transformation preceded by frequency pre -warping. So here that term S plus A, the first order term, it determines the critical frequency. So S plus A is to be converted into S plus A prime, where A prime is 2 by tau, 10 A tau by 2. So that's what I have done here. The numerator is does not contain S. So here there is no question of converting A to A prime. Simply terms in involving S. So that is done. All right. Remember that GS, the expression that is given, it's a first order analog low pass filter. So the DC gain of this filter is to be preserved. So now once you get GS A prime, you apply the bilinear transformation relation. So S is replaced by 2 by tau. 1 minus z to the power minus 1 by 1 plus z to the power minus 1. So what do you get then? This one. GdZ will be given by this expression and k has to be evaluated so as to preserve the DC gain of the analog filter. The DC gain of the analog filter was seen to be unity. And so we desire that the digital filter also should have a DC gain of 1. DC gain of the digital filter is obtained by replacing Z with 1. So you get the DC gain of the digital filter as written on the left hand side, this term. So that should be equal to 1. So K should come out as 2 by tau, 10 A tau by 2 by A. On making that replacement for K here, what do you get? You get GDZ as given there. So that is the final form of GDZ. So write down this example.
Quickly write down these properties of bilinear transformation preceded by frequency pre -warping. Stable GS transforms to stable GDZ. There is no aliasing of characteristic. Amplitude response of GDZ matches amplitude response of GS at very low frequencies that was there plus now near pre-warped critical frequencies so that's the uh, i mean the merit of using bilinear the frequency pre-warping
the phase response is distorted. And it's easy to apply because no factorization of the numerator or denominator polynomial is necessary. And therefore, no partial fraction expansion is also necessary. Impulse response, because you have deviated from the exact relation, the impulse response is not preserved. And phase response is also distorted since frequency response at omega equal to infinity is compressed to capital omega prime equal to pi by tau. So that completes our theory for designing of IIR filters. So now the only thing left is considering certain problems, numerical problems. So when can we meet next? Saturday morning? Say something. Sir, actually, uh, on 13th, we have class test from 10 to uh, 11.30. Oh. If it's not con inconvenient for you, I, we can, I can meet in uh, Saturday afternoon also. Say around 3 o'clock or something like that. No, sir, in the evening also there is a class the test, class test. Of BJB, sir. Okay, then one win. Monday is 15. Will, uh, Sunday will be okay for you. Sunday will be okay for me, no problem. Sir, we have, uh, till now we have no class test on Sunday, 14th. So Sunday at what time? Sir, 10.30. Uh, okay. So that is fixed Sunday at 10.30. Okay, sir. Okay. So after you write down, let me know. Uh, I'll log out.
Boleh, boleh. Yes, sir, Dan. So let me just stop recording and then log out.